Well, greetings. This is Trev from OnlinePClearning.com. In this little tutorial, I'm going to show you how it's possible with a database like this to be able to show a picture of your employee when you click on the employee name. Now, there's two methods I'll be discussing with you. One, you just click on the employee. Now, I haven't put it pictures of people in here because, of course, I can get into trouble doing that, but I just put ordinary pictures. If you did decide to use employee pictures in your company, please get their permission first. So when you click on the employee, a different picture will occur. If you get to a situation where there is no picture for that employee, as is the case down here further, it's going to say no picture. All right, so that's going to show you all the different ways you can do it. That's the first way is to show you how to use the click event in the list box to show the pictures. The next way will be to use the double click event and only show the pictures when you send the employee details down here to these text boxes for editing. So in this example, what we're going to show is now when we double click, we send the information down here where we might be editing the employee information and the picture then appears. So a little bit different. I'll put both the bits of code up on this video so you'll see how they work. All right, well, let's get started. If you're interested, please continue on with the video. If not, thank you very much for watching up until now. So the first thing we want to do is create our little uh, user form with a list box and text boxes in it. So the first thing to do is to hit Alt and F11 to open your VBA editor. Here's our VBA editor here. We want to create a very simple user form because we're just using this to demonstrate. We've got a command button here. I'll open the properties up and you can see the names that I've given to these controls and then you can use the same names so that the code that I'm giving you will work. I've called the command button here. So I guess before I even do that, I should mention how you insert a user form. It's simply insert user form and that will add a new user form for you. When you've added the new user form, you would make sure that you see your toolbox, which is, um, you should see here, here it is over here. If you don't see it, uh, click on the view tab and click toolbox. And these are your controls. We're going to be adding an image control, which you see down here. We're going to be adding also a label. We're going to be adding a text box and we're also going to be adding a list box. They're the controls that we'll be using in here. So our first is our command button. I didn't mention that, we're also going to be adding a command button which is down here. Now, the command button is called CMD close. We then would put a list box on. The list box is called LST lowercase, not 1ST, LST, that's short for list box, LST employee. And you'll notice in the properties here that I've actually set the column widths to what I want for the data in the list box. You don't need to do that, but what you will need to do is set the number of columns here that you want to show in your list box. Bound column will be one, and a seven will be the number of columns, depending on the data you're using. If you're using the template that I'm gonna put on the website, well then that's what you'd put in. That's basically it, except for you need to have a row source, and the row source for your list box will be called data. Now. I'll show you what data is in a moment. It's a named range and it's just populating the list box with some information from a spreadsheet. Now in real, in real terms with a real application, this would be a dynamic named range, but because this is just an example tutorial, I've just used a static named range. But again, I'll show you in a moment. Next is our image control. I've called this image control and pay particular attention to this, the word PIC, P-I-C. Okay, now, labels up the top here for ID, surname, first name, address, all the way through. But now here are text boxes. We have our seven text boxes in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They are named just simply EMP1, EMP2, EMP3, all the way through. Just a nice, easy little convention that we could loop through them if we wanted, all the way through to EMP7. That's how to set this user form up. If you do that, then you'll find that you'll be able to continue with adding the code if you've named those exactly as I said or I've shown you there. All right, we're gonna close this user form. Well, actually, we're gonna close the VBA editor there. I'll show uh, our commands up here and I'll just go to view and I'll show our headers. Not that it's really important, but in data, here's our data sheet. We've got a named range that just picks up this data here. I'll show it to you by showing our formula bar. Over here to the right is our named range data. There it is there. How do you create a named range? Well, all you do is just scroll over the area you want to show the data 
and then click into here, type your name in here, and then hit enter. Very easy to create a static named range, that's how you do it. So that's the name that we put into the row source of our list box so that it would show up in our list box. So really, when we push the list box and we put the row source in there, it's showing up all of that data from the spreadsheet in the list box. That's simply all it's doing. Now before I move on, I have to show you what I've done with the folder for where the pictures are. The pictures aren't in fact in the Excel file, we're linking to them. I'll show you where they are. What you need to do is get this Excel file that you're working on and put it in a folder because our file path is going to be to within this folder. So I'll show you now, just minimize this. Here is our folder, pull it down here. You'll notice there's our Excel file. It's in a folder called Picks in a User Form. If I was to minimize this, you'd see it here. Let's move this out of the way. Picks in a User Form. Open it up and there we have our Excel file that you're looking at that is open. And next to it we have another folder and it's called Pictures. Inside that we need to have our pictures. Now notice how I have named the pictures in here. I have 111JPG, 112JPG, they're all JPGs and look they're small small pictures too, not huge ones. All right, And I've just used a naming convention there that is in fact exactly the same as the unique ID for the row source for each employee. So if this was a picture of Bob and his the, the unique ID for his row of data was 1111, then you'd put his picture here, you'd call it 1111.jpg, and then when we open our user our file up, it would pick this one. So look, I'll open the user form up again so that you can see exactly what I mean. So now, having said that to you, here's our user form. You notice over here, 111, that's our unique ID for this Ace Barclay, not Bob, of course. And if we click in here, we're picking up that same picture that you saw. In the, so this is what we're using to reference the picture. We've named the picture by that unique ID and that enables us to pick it up every time we click on it. And if there's no picture, well, there's a little bit of code we run that says if there's an error that occurs, error number 53, put in no picture. All right, now you've got the idea with that. There's two pieces of code. I'll show you what they are now. Now before we go any further, you've noticed that I've named the user form employee DB, and in our modules I've inserted a module and it just simply says employee DB dot show. That's what I've used in order to, here on this shape, which is a, a nice little monogram, I should do a tutorial showing you how to create that in Word, but in this I've just assigned the macro that you see there, uh, we want to put this to this workbook only, and we've assigned the macro show to it. All right, that's the macro that I just showed you before. Alt and F11 again, we'll get our VBA editor back. Let's have a look at the user form and the little bits of code that are involved. Okay, clicking into that user form, we see the close button, CMD close, just simply has the code unload me. Now, here's the double click event, which sends the data from the list box over to those text boxes. Me, EMP1, EMP2, remember those ones we showed you how to create? Here they are all over here, and it's just simply what we're doing is I equals me LST employee list index, and then we're simply showing or pushing the data, whatever we select in that list box, it's gonna send the column information right over. So here we've got uh, employee one, we'll have first column, then second column, third column, all the way down here, right through. Okay, and that would always be for the selected item I. Now, once you've done that, here is the employee click event. This is the piece of code that sends the picture from the folder in the same folder as the file up to that image control. So, we've dimmed our variables up here. And we're setting our file path, which is this workbook path. Right, so in other words, it's got to be in the same folder as the workbook. And then, remember we called that that folder we put in with all our pictures and we called it pictures. So there's the part, right, with a folder called pictures where all our pictures are. Again, we're just using a variable here for I, for our list index, what's selected in the list box. Now, here's the, what you need to look at. On error, remove next, resume next. We want it to keep going if there's an error. 
me pick remember the name of that image control was called pick so me pick picture equals load picture f path so we're using that file path there and then me employee column zero i so it's we're loading it and we're picking up that unique id which is might be one 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 or one 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 two whatever it is and then putting the a JPG after it. Make sure all your images are JPG if you're using. If there's no picture available, you're going to get an error, and the error will be number 53. If that's the case, we then want to load a specific picture. So it's me, pick, image control again, load picture path, and it's no picture.jpg. That's simply it. Now, if you're using that, that will, every time you click on the list box, that's this piece of code here. So when you click, single click, that's what that does. If you want to disable that and you only want to show the image when you double click, then you use this next piece of code. So you wouldn't use this piece of code to do what we want. Okay? You'd send the controls, the information over to the text boxes here, and then you'd use this one, which is EMP1 change. This is where the unique ID is. And after dimming the variables, it sets the file path exactly the same as before. It says if if it's not empty, then run this piece of code on error resume next me pick name of the image control again, load picture exactly the same, except this time we're using the emp value, which will be 1111 or 1112 and so on. Again, exactly the same. If there's an error, load no pick. And that's simply it. Away you go. Nothing more to show. You can choose to use either one of those, activate it from a shape on, on your worksheet, now, this isn't a completed project with bells and whistles. This is just to show you how you can do something that will be very useful for a project you may already have. Had a lot of inquiries about this. Several on the website have made attempts to do this. It's not all that difficult, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to do this tutorial to show you how it can be done. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. Thank you very much for listening to me once again, and I hope you're having a really great day. Bye for now.